Yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we have one of the more popular Dimash requests. This is Diva Dance from the Bastao Concert 2017. I also received many recommendations for the performance with Li Yu Gang. I do plan on doing that as well at some point in the future. There are a few contextual things that I want to mention in this introduction. So it's taken from the film The Fifth Element, and in that film an alien character sings it. It's meant to be this kind of insanely difficult, almost unsingable piece of music. Technology was used to help create the final product in the film. Just like that. In the film, the alien's performance starts off, however, with a kind of classical romantic aria, which is from Donizetti's opera Lucia de la Memoir. In the opera, this aria is being sung by Lucia as she's becoming mad, so it's a sign of her insanity. Here are the lyrics on the screen if you want to pause and read them. The composer, Donizetti, originally wanted to use the glass harmonica for this aria as the accompaniment. The glass harmonica is quite an archaic instrument that's been often associated with madness. I spoke about that in my pentatonics reaction, The Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, so here's a quick clip from that. On the glass harmonica, which was an instrument created by Benjamin Franklin. Very eerie sound, isn't it? It's basically bowls of glass spinning around and the player dips their hands in water and rubs the bowls. You know, if you have like a wine glass and it creates that sound when you rub it. It's an interesting instrument. It was believed that it would actually cause madness. So this aria, the bit of music preceding the really crazy diva dance bit, which is the bit that I've been told in the comments that Dimash sings, Dimash doesn't sing the aria. That aria in the fifth element of the film is very, very carefully chosen. The musical craziness, that whole crazy section is perfectly set up by an operatic aria about craziness. Madness is the underlying premise here. So I've seen the performance from The Fifth Element and on that note it's a crazy bit of music. Ridiculously high, I'll be curious to see if Dimash performs it in the same key. If he does, well, I don't know. Uh, let's just get straight into it. <laughs> I don't know what he said there, so someone please let me know down below. I don't know why I'm surprised because I know he can do it and I know the song. Yeah, it's seeing it is just mad. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Well, there we go. It's a nice and short one. Before we go over the musical analysis of that, what I liked about the diva dance in the film The Fifth Element is that it's portraying what art might be like in the future, which we don't normally see. In futuristic depictions, it's usually technology or warfare or weaponry or, you know, something to do with that that we see. In the film, an alien sings it. An alien beyond human capabilities. I often see comments saying Dimash is an alien. So I ask you, is the future now? Okay, silly philosophy aside, let's go back to the start and get into the musical analysis. So he's basically in the same key as in the film, just one semitone down. So we've gone from G sharp to G. It's absurd. So the music itself, before we get into Dimash's melody, it does a couple of things fairly obviously to incite this notion of madness. Or maybe not madness per se, but definitely not peacefulness, calmness. I don't know which word to use, not agitation, but unrest maybe? Basically, it keeps us on our toes. We don't have a moment to sit back and relax.
Method one, the music to percussion ratio. More time is spent without audible notes playing, so the majority of the time is a beat. And when we hear the chords, they're quick, they're snatched and they just come straight off. Melodically speaking, yeah, we do have a bit of bass, but it's really, really overpowered by the beat. And method two, the rhythmic choices. Most prominently, because when we hear the chords, they're snatched, when they do play, naturally they're accented. They come on the off beats, so they're syncopated. Let's hear them again and I'll just count the common time. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then when Dimash enters, he is its standard rhythms on the beat. which lulls us into a false sense of security because standard beats and rhythms equals expected. It's nothing too crazy. So this contrast of emotions that we might be feeling, no matter how subtle they are, is powerful in music. At the same time, another example of contrast here is the backing instrumentation. We've got a quick beat going on, a rapidly moving bass line, but then we have some static synth chords in the background, not really moving. Dimash's entry too is clever because it, again, it throws us off a little bit. He starts with chromatic notes, F sharp to G. We might expect that G, the root to come in the first beat of the bar, which would be something like this. But he goes up to the fifth note of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, that D there. And meanwhile, we have the second degree of the scale. So in G, the second note is this one here, the A, which is also playing. This is called the supertonic. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll be very familiar with this by now. And having this in there as well, just adds some extra dissonance in these static chords, some extra non-standardness, something perhaps a bit unexpected. The melody itself, maybe it's just me who thinks this, but I find it quite lulling, almost trance-like. <laughs> Again, he starts that phrase chromatically, moving in the smallest interval you can. And then he outlines a D arpeggio, whilst sliding between those two notes. We know he doesn't need to slide there, but to me, adding in that glissando, that slide, subconsciously feels tired, like you don't have the energy to be able to just hit the notes perfectly. It's a decision that Dimash has made here, arguably quite small, that contributes to this kind of trance-like element I mentioned before. That's how I feel. Then he just goes straight up to that top D. Moving down to the top C and sustaining it. The D is, you know, off the keyboard, up the octave from here, and then to here. That C there, the one that he's sustaining, that's the top note from the famous quartet of Allegri's Miserere Mei Deus. And then we get this bit, and this is the real master control. The top note of that phrase is the same top note, the top top F, that we get in the Queen of the Night aria. If you've seen my previous Dimash videos, I, I like to use this clip as a benchmark. I'm just going to go out on a whim and say that Mozart's Queen of the Night that we just heard was probably a source of inspiration for this song. And then straight after that, Dimash goes down. Down to this B flat here. So from that top top F, which is the F above here, off the keyboard up here, all the way down to here. That's nearly four octaves in this one performance within 10 seconds. Utter madness. And in the film version, the alien character goes one octave above what Dimash is singing. So Dimash has added an extra octave down. Again, range. There are many people in the world who have over a four octave range, but there are very few who can sing it consistently under pressure with such precision. By the way, the alien is performed by Inver Muller. I feel like I should credit her name instead of just calling her the alien character. And then we get this bit. Dimash has altered the melody slightly from the original to compare it to the original, which remembers in a slightly different key. See how it's jumping up, down, up, down between the octaves. The reason why Dimash has changed this, I think, is because the risk to reward ratio is probably not great. No doubt he can sing that like this, but remember he is human. I mean, he is obviously an alien as well, but that part is just ridiculous and it's probably a bit more unstabling than singing it the way he did. I also prefer the amendment he made. I think it's a bit more melodic. Maybe being melodic isn't the aim of what David Hunts is. I do understand that, but melodicness is melodicness and I will always like it. And then we get the next phrase, which he also changes. I think he changes it again for the same reasons. If we hear that in the original, 
This is one of the clips I included in my introduction that is just obviously treated vocals. It sounds so th synthetic. If we were to transpose her line there into Dimash's key, it would sound like this. Dimash instead sings this. So he's up a sixth, closer to where he's going next. Also, again, it's more melodic and less risky. I think we can all agree that his amendments sound great. And then just after that, again, way up there, we get these insane alterations between two notes. Those two notes are the notes in between the top note of the Miserere May Deus clip I played earlier and the Queen of the Night clip I played earlier. So point is, they're very, very high. Before we go into the next bit, which is Dimash's lovely melisma downwards, this was the other clip that I included in my introduction, an example of obviously treated vocals. <laughs> Dimash takes that and transforms it into a ridiculous harmonically adjusted scale. He skips a note here or there. It's amazing, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, that's almost like a diva moment. Let's watch it at half speed. The range of that phrase alone is a top top E just under the Queen of the Night top note going down to this G here. So again almost two octaves. And remember this is two octaves where the lowest note is towards the top end of a choral tenor's range. So then after that comes this phrase where we get a new lowest note of his, a G2 down here. Sliding all the way up to here. Three octaves. Dimash. Please calm yourself, this is absurd. Which leads into these repeated staccato disjointed notes. Notice how they're lagging, slightly behind the music. This adds tension to the overall unrest, to use the same word that I used earlier. And again, he's adjusted the melody here, he's singing much higher than the original. Blimey, and then finally, the last phrase in true Dimash style. His final Dimashification is to go upwards on the last note, which does not happen in the original. Finishing on that top, top D in between the Miserere top C and the Queen of the Night top F. Yeah, crazy. Imagine being one of these people here witnessing that live. I'd love to know if anyone watching now was there at this concert in 2017. Yeah, I mean, that was a short one. Utterly absurd. So much to talk about. I don't think we need to say anything more, really. Well, it's fun as well, that one, isn't it? It is fun. Yeah, I'm going to listen to this a few more times. I don't think I can listen to this too much. It's more just about the technical ability and craziness here that we're just in awe of. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to support me and join the community, you can do so by joining the YouTube memberships or Patreon linked in the description below. And I will see you next time.